Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem from International Math Olympiad. International Math Olympiad is a two-day, nine-hour test with six problems. It's a very difficult test. But those years, you know, it was, I think it started in 1959, and not very many countries were participating. I think currently it's about more than 80 countries participating. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. This is a radical equation, the square root of x squared minus p plus 2 times the square root of x squared minus 1 is equal to x. p is a parameter, so as p changes, the solutions change. We have to check a few things. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the radicals. First of all, if you look at the left-hand side, we, it's the sum of two radicals. If x is real, then, of course, they need to be greater than or equal to 0, so their sum, which is x, is also greater than or equal to 0. So that's our first requirement. And then we have to look inside the radicals. x squared minus p needs to be greater than or equal to 0. This implies that x squared is greater than or equal to p. Great. And then we also need to check this one, x squared minus 1, needs to be greater or equal to 0, which implies x squared is greater or equal to 1. And this implies two things. Either x is greater than or equal to 1, or x is less than or equal to negative 1. But since x must be greater or equal to 0, we are not going to be able to use this condition, so we have to go with x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay? Now, and of course, this basically gives us x is greater than or equal to 1 because that already covers the positivity. Okay, so let's go ahead and square both sides under those conditions. We're going to get something like this when we square both sides. x squared minus p plus 4 times x squared minus 1 plus 4 times the radicals, square root of x squared minus p times the square root of x squared minus 1, and that's going to equal x squared. The first thing you should check is x squared, that cancels out, and then we end up with something like this. Let's go ahead and do the following. Keep all the radical expressions on one side and put everything else on the other side. So we're going to get something like this. 4 times the square root of x squared minus p times the square root of x squared minus 1 equals p plus 4 minus 4x squared. I just distributed the 4 and negated everything to put on the right hand side. Now we got to look at something else we, because we have a radical expression on the left which is kind of like the product of two radicals which have to be greater than or equal to zero and that implies that this needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And what does that give us? Let's check. p plus 4 minus 4x squared needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And from here, we immediately get 4x squared is less than or equal to p plus 4. And upon division by 4, x squared must be less than or equal to p plus 4 divided by 4. That's another condition we need to check. Okay, under those conditions, let's go ahead and square both sides again. And that's going to give us the following. 16 times x squared minus p times x squared minus 1, and then that's going to equal the expression, that expression squared. Let's go ahead and square it right away. I'm going to take this as a quantity, p plus 4 squared, and then minus 8x squared times p plus 4, and finally plus 16x to the fourth power. So we basically treat it as a minus b squared, uh, use that identity, which is easier than a plus b plus c squared. It's a little shorter, anyways. So now, when we distribute this and then multiply everything by 16, we're going to get something like this. Kind of, we got to un keep unwrapping this. 16x to the fourth minus, and I'm going to, you know, kind of factor this and keep it organized. p plus 1x squared plus 16p. Everything is multiplied by 16. And then on the right hand side, we get p squared plus 8p plus 16. And then I'm going to keep this uh, like 8 times p plus 4x squared because I'm going to put together the coefficients of x squared as a polynomial, plus 16x to the fourth power. Take a look at this. This problem is really nice because things cancel out. Okay, great. 16x to the fourth cancel out, and then we end up with a sort of like a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and take a look. 16p plus 1x squared. Now, I'm going to put everything on the right-hand side because 
that's where x squared is going to be positive and then I have this and I have that I'm going to subtract those and then I'm going to write this you could keep it as a p plus 4 squared but I, I, I'd like to expand it and then this is equal to 0 great now this is our quadratic but we're going to write it in a different way so let's go ahead and subtract the coefficients of x squared here 16p minus 8p is 8p and then 16 minus 32 is negative 16 that's going to be the coefficient of x squared and then from here so you can do a couple different things you can put this expression right here on the right hand side and you know what I think I'll keep it as a perfect square so let me go ahead and write this as p plus 4 squared I probably should never expanded it but anyways and then put it with a minus sign and then my goal is to isolate x squared obviously this is the most important part and I kind of messed up somewhere I think oh yes I forgot to subtract something uh, because this gives me a minus 8p there you go okay yeah exactly when I subtract it it should be p squared minus 8p plus 16 and now this becomes p minus let me go ahead and back up a little bit to fix this okay so plus p minus 4 squared is 0 here we go okay now it's good now we're going to okay I, my goal is to isolate x squared how can I do that in a different way a couple different ways but let's put the p minus 4 squared on the right hand side with a minus sign and then divide both sides by 8p minus 16 and of course you don't want a minus sign in front of this so let's go ahead and negate top and bottom that gives us p minus 4 squared divided by 16 minus 8p makes sense this is super duper important we're going to take a look at it towards the end but this is what x squared is so we have been working with inequalities now we got an equation right so let's go ahead and check each of these requirements so we had three requirements as hopefully you'll remember we do need x squared oh by the way x squared we can use this instead of that so forget about it let me go ahead and list those requirements and then we're going to use them so first requirement I want to use x squared as greater than or equal to p first because of the fir uh, first radical and then my second requirement is going to be x squared is greater than or equal to 1 and the third one is x squared is less than or equal to p plus 4 over 4 remember this come uh, comes up after we square both sides and now I'm, I gotta check all of these requirements but those are gonna be easy to check let's go ahead and do it so the first one x squared is greater than or equal to p from here we get something like p minus 4 squared divided by 16 minus 8p remember I got a value for x squared I'm gonna just compare it to p so if this is greater than or equal to p now I got a single equation this is an inequality subtract p, <laughs> subtract p from both sides arrange the terms and here's what you can end up with I'm gonna keep that story short so you can immediately get to the answer and then this is the inequality we get from here and this implies that since the top is a perfect square 16 minus 8p must be greater than greater than 0 this implies that p is less than 2 okay it can't be 0 second requirement x squared is greater than or equal to 1 this implies p minus 4 squared over 16 minus 8p that's x squared again is greater or equal to 1 and this implies that p squared over 16 minus 8p is greater than or equal to 0 if you arrange the terms and so on and so forth guess what this also gives you p is less than 2 awesome we're getting perfect squares so all we have to do is check the denominator the third one yes x squared must be less than or equal to p plus 4 divided by 4 and this implies something like this let me give you 3p squared after you replace x squared with what it is you get something like this again the denominator doesn't really change I think this is an 8p not 2p and then this needs to be less than or equal to 0 and guess what this implies we can factor out a p and then this needs to be less than or equal to 0 right and this implies 0 between 0 and 4 thirds because if you make a table that's what you're gonna get of course you also have to consider the fact that 
uh, z p is less than 2. So we got this inequality and p is less than 2 twice. So their intersection is p is less than 2. So now I got to look at the overlap. How do they intersect, right? So intersection will be of these two inequalities. p is between 0 and 4 thirds inclusive. So under these conditions, if p is on that interval, then x becomes the square root, which is 4 minus p, divided by the square root of 16 minus 8p. Now, why, why did we choose 4 minus p, not p minus 4? Take a look at the values of p, and then you're going to get the idea. Otherwise, there are no solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.